All right, so as I'm live, good morning, friends. It's Mike with High Intensity Health. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we're live. So if you can see me and hear me and uh, you want to learn a little bit more about calories and calorie counting and tracking macros and resting metabolic rate, if those are topics that you're interested in learning a little bit more about, because I get questions about this all the time in one of my most popular videos on YouTube, I'd say every other day people comment in on it and it's all about calories and how uh, intermittent fasting and uh, this model that we need to count our calories is not really true. I get people that, that, that say that's BS, this is, you know, calories really matter. So um, here we are, we're live. Okay, I can see myself, that's cool. So I'm gonna make sure that I can see you guys. So what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Uh, so thanks for being here. I have one thumbs down. <laughs> okay, so if you like this vi these videos, if you like this content, if you like this channel, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would encourage you to subscribe. So I have some chat people coming in. Hello from Idaho. You know what? Uh, so Becca, I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho right now. Actually, that's why I'm, I'm being a little bit more quiet than normal uh, because my family is still kind of hanging out, having breakfast. We're gonna go paddleboarding. I'm at my dad's place here. And uh, that's a beautiful, you know, uh, scenery behind me. So we're gonna do some outdoor activities. So uh, thanks for coming on, guys. So today, um, I, I definitely wanna take a lot of your questions, but wanna talk to you, I've been doing a lot of research and um, kind of summarizing some of this, this information for our members. So uh, you guys know that we have the Keto Lean Masterclass and other membership portals where we provide m even more content that we do in these videos. And because this question has come up so much, you know, what should my macros be? Um, what about my resting metabolic rate? You know, some of my clients will go to a, a physical therapy type or exercise type center and get their resting metabolic rate tracked. And then they'll have meal plans based upon the resting metabolic rate. And that's actually not, uh, I, I shouldn't say it's not a bad idea, but it's not necessarily a good idea because just being insulin resistant and overweight, guess what that's going to do to your resting metabolic rate? It's going to increase it. So I know this sounds a little paradoxical to some of you, but the more you weigh, the more your resting metabolic rate is. That doesn't mean that it's healthy. So the, the you know, and I was just catching up with Dr. Ben Bickman, PhD researcher at BYU University. I shared some of this with our Keto Lean Masterclass members and our Patreon members and so on. Uh, some of the videos from that, and we're gonna launch you know, some snippets of it next week for all of you. But it's very interesting, you know, he studies ketones and insulin and pathophysiology and exercise metabolism at his lab at BYU. And you know, he was, we were just talking about you know, this idea that, that people have this skewed perception of their resting metabolic rate. And it, and it really kind of stems, and this, these are his words, not mine, from this idea that, you know, this calories in, calories out model. And so, you know, as Ben said, the 150 pound version of Ben, um, that resting metabolic rate is gonna be lower compared to the 200 pound overweight version of Ben. So I know a lot of clients, they, they come to me and they say, you know, Mike, I just have a sluggish metabolism. You know, I just, I'm not able to burn fat. And while they may, the latter part might, might be true, they may be unable to burn fat as effectively as they could. It doesn't mean their metabolic rate is slow, uh, you know, and so that's the thing. We need to kind of dismiss that. So um, obviously, you know, a few examples of this, right? Uh, let me just check in the questions here. I'm getting a lot of questions here. Hello from Germany. Thanks for being here. Hello from Los Angeles. That's cool. Hello from Arizona. Uh, if we were good utilizers of keystones, I think you meant ketones, uh, and they do slow measuring them. How do you know if you're in ketosis? Uh, Kathleen, I don't fully understand the question. Um, hello from San Francisco. Hello from Wales, Spain, Mexico City, Dubai. This is amazing, guys. I really am so grateful that you're here. And, uh, and so that, you know, let, let's go back to... Um, you know, to the topic at hand, calories. This has been on the top of mind for a lot of people. You know, I just want to prevent, present to you a couple different ideas. Your body has really no way to directly measure calories, right? Your body can sense incoming glucose, incoming carbs, you know, fiber. Uh, it can, you know, track and absorb and uh, ferment in your microbiome, protein and fat. So th this calorie, that's a theoretical energy yield that food garners, right? But that's, a, that's assuming that you're absorbing 100% of it and and let's talk about the microbiome before we get into the hormones associated with calories this is a really really important point overweight people tend to have gut bacteria within their small intestine and colon that are very efficient at extracting calories and energy from the food that they eat so you can take your resting metabolic rate and your BMR that you got from your exercise phys lab let's say you're supposed to you know theoretically your body burns 2200 calories per day you eat a you know macronutrient 
optimal diet, right, of that 2,200 calories per day, for example. But if you have imbalanced gut bacteria, because historically you've been eating a lot of processed foods, carbohydrates, junk food, you've had antibiotics, proton pump inhibitors, you've been mindlessly eating. These are all things, by the way, that contribute to imbalanced gut bacteria. We talk all about these in these courses that we offer. And so you, you, you eat, you burn 2,200 calories theoretically per day. You're eating 2,200 calories per day, but you're still gaining weight. Well, what's going on? One factor could be that your gut bacteria are imbalanced, and those gut bacteria are really efficient at extracting the energy from the food that you're eating, and they actually convert the dietary energy, uh, you know, the, the uh, carbohydrates and fats, proteins, etc., into short-chain fatty acids that your body then absorbs, and those trigger your fat cells to be enlarged. A propionic acid, for example, can trigger aberrant behaviors within the brain, aberrant feeding behaviors. Uh, if you wanna learn a little bit more about that, we've done some videos in the autism intensive that talk about that a little bit more. So it's not a perfect science, and that's why I, you know, a core theme that we talk about on this channel in the courses that we offer for our members and, and for those of you guys who are interested in a little more about that, is undulating your carbohydrates, undulating your calories, meaning that some days you might have more calories than you burn, right? You're in, you're overshooting a little bit, and other days are a little bit less, maybe a rest day, maybe an inactive day, maybe a day where you're really busy with your family, maybe a day you're really busy at work, uh, you know, something like that. But on days where you're really exercising, you're pushing the needle, you're doing walking, hiking, biking, yard work, you know, you're weight training, you can have an excess of calories. And so that's what's important though, is that if you're going to have either a lot of calories, you know, because you're really active or you're sedentary or you're injured, right? Or you're traveling, so you're not able to do much activity. We really want to focus next on the hormones because that's going to differentiate between the ener where your energy is being partitioned that you are ingesting. So this is why a lot of people on that Jason Fung video, I'll put it in the description below this video, a lot of people, so it's gotten close to 900,000 views in the last seven months. A lot of, and he talks about calories and how this calorie in, calorie out model doesn't work. Why? Because it doesn't account for your hormones. So, okay, if you don't believe me about calories, I want you to go do an experiment and prove it to yourself. Go eat only 700 calories per day and eat only Twinkies and tell me what happens to you. Tell me, eat, eat a Twinkie every two hours and tell me if you lose weight on that diet. Uh, I, I mean, most adult humans burn more than eight to 700 calories per day. So if you eat only 700 calories per day of Twinkies or Ding Dongs or donuts, tell me what happens to you. I will promise to you, because I've done similar, back in college, I used to eat junk food, uh, you know, similar experiments where you only, you know, people only eat one or two times a day and they're eating muffins, Diet Cokes, uh, bagels, cream cheese, and they're putting on the freshman 15, right? Why? Because those foods are altering their gut hormones and their gut microbiome, but they're hormones. So the thing is, if you're in a hypo calorie state, but you're eating foods that are triggering hormonal imbalances like spiking insulin, that's going to tell your body, tell your fat cells, tell your brain, tell the other tissues within your body, the liver and so forth to build and not burn. So that's what Dr. Jason Fung was talking about. Now, the other element of this calorie restriction model that a lot of people often forget about is when you cut your calories, guess what happens? Your resting metabolic rate drops. So it's not a very efficient way. Now, I'm not saying that you can't lose weight if you cut your calories, but it's not a very efficient way to lose weight because <clears throat> your body compensates and it reduces your, your resting metabolic rate. Uh, if you look at you know, some different studies, the Biosphere study, example, I'll put this in the Patreon members area, click the description, five bucks a month, guys, you get all the research and things that we talk about. So the Biosphere study, at, uh, it was somewhere in Arizona, I think Tucson, Arizona, individuals were in this Biosphere for two years. They had a really low calorie diet compared to their baseline. And they track things like free T3, thyroid hormone. They track things like uh, energy expenditure, resting metabolic rate. And when these individuals really drop their calories, their thyroid hormone dropped 39% after 18 months. So think about it. thyroid hormone, right? Triggers every cell in your body to rev up its cellular metabolism. Uh, if you don't have thyroid hormone, you can't burn fat for fuel, right? <clears throat> The, the Biosphere study was just one of many studies. There was another big study back in the, 
can't remember the name of it, a Massachusetts fasting study, something like that, back in the 1950s, very similar study, where they had individuals that were on a very low calorie diet, and they checked their resting metabolic rate before and resting metabolic rate after, and guess what? When they dropped the calories, there was a commensurate drop in the energy uh, expenditure, in the resting metabolic rate, and individuals, when they cut their calories, guess what? They don't do enough volitional exercise and movement. Okay. As you know, if you've tuned into this channel before, if you've watched these videos, follow me on Facebook and follow my wife, we're super, you know, one of our, a paradigm that we believe in if, and believe that you should, uh, you know, construct your lifestyle around is exercise, getting at least 15 to 20,000 steps per day, doing weight training four to five days a week. If you're not doing those folks, it's gonna be hard to keto adapt. It's gonna be hard to burn fat. It's gonna be hard to enhance the health of your microbiome and overall have a healthy lifestyle. So I've been rambling here. I want to get your questions. Um, okay, let me just check here. Hello from Melbourne, Australia. Love that. I was ketogenic for seven weeks. Uh, this is Molly B says, and I felt amazing in all aspects, but unfortunately didn't lose weight, which is why I was following to the book. Okay, uh, so Molly B just posted an interview with Dr. Tommy Wood. Check that out because we do talk about some of the reasons there. Uh, and what I would suggest, Molly, and for anyone that's having issues with, with losing weight when they're keto especially, are you tracking your ketones? Is there a rise in ketones? If there's not, it could be that for some reason insulin is preventing. Remember, uh, one way to make ketones, uh, you know, the main way, <laughs> right, uh, is fasting, exercise, and so forth in a low-carb style diet, and that's going to trigger your liver to, um, you know, in the context of low glucose, low insulin, trigger your liver to make these things called ketones. So um, the other thing I would suggest, Molly, and we talked about this all on this Genetic Summit, Interpret Your Gene Summit, it's going on. I'll put a link in the description below this video with James Maskell, a really, really good summit. And we talk about the genetics of individuals and how that can vary based upon their ability to keto adapt. For example, individuals from Portugal of, or of Portuguese descent, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and then folks in South America, certain parts like Brazil, with the Portuguese in, uh, influence, uh, tend to have a slower, what's called HMG-CoA uh, lyase, and this, this is the enzyme that helps synthesize uh, the ketones. And so there are some genetics involved here, friends, so if you're interested in learning more about that, check out that summit. Keep that in mind, Molly. But to go back to your question, are you tracking ketones? Are the ketones rising? How are they fasting? How are they after exercise? How are they after meals? We want to check that out. And so we want to look. Uh, the biggest thing that I would say, if you're having an ability to lose weight on a ketogenic style diet, is are you doing enough weight training and enough exercise? A lot of my clients that I work with in our Keto Lean Masterclass and our membership portal and all that sort of stuff, uh, they're only getting like five, 6,000 steps a day. And they might do a workout, but for most of the day, they're sedentary. And that's just not going to really help you burn fat for fuel. Okay. Uh, MNL says how to apply and getting leaner than necessary, getting a six pack. Um, get, you know, so, um, how should I say this? When you become more healthy, uh, a natural kind of side effect or side benefit is getting the six pack, getting vascular arms, getting more shredded. So I would say, first of all, focus on your hormones, balancing your hormones, getting good sleep, getting good exercise. And as a side benefit, you're going to start to lose the weight. So if we just focus myopically on the weight, we can have an unhealthy obsession and relationship with food, with dieting and with exercise. And that's not necessarily congruent with health. So that's going to be what I'm going to suggest to you. You may not want to hear it, but that, that those are the tips here. Uh, Sunshine State Rocks. Yes, Moses. Hello. Deb says nutrients. Amazing group of people from all around. Hello, Becca. Uh, Angie Lee Rich Pitch TV says, true, gut health is everything. Glad you mentioned this. I'm nervous now. My calories are way too high on keto. So much fat scares me. Um, yeah, you know, so Angie Lee, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being here on the YouTube Live. You know, um, a lot of people have this misconception that when they go on a ketogenic diet that they need to have tons of fat, 300 grams a day of fat. Every meal has to have butter, bacon, lard. You know, that's not really the case. The, the prerequisite to get into a ketotic state is just low insulin. So you can really have a lower carbohydrate style diet, moderate protein, moderate fat. You know, if you follow me on Instagram, Metabolic Mike, uh, and my wife, Real Food Lab, we share a lot of the foods to eat and a lot of people are surprised like wait that doesn't look like keto that salad and then like two to four ounces of grass-fed beef or or maybe three eggs like what where's the butter where's the lard where's the bacon and you know 
actually a lot of people make this mistake because we talked about it in many other videos and in the courses, but when you have too much fat and your gut health is not on track, you can absorb pro-inflammatory bacterial particles that can cause you to be insulin resistant, that can prevent you from getting into a ketogenic fat burning state in the, in the first place. So I have so many clients and have helped so many people transition their mindset from this, you know, this over abundance of dietary fat to actually scaling back a little bit on the fat, focusing more on the phytonutrients, the fiber, the real foods. And guess what? Gut health improves, motility improves, digestion improves. Because if that's not there, I don't care how much fat you're eating, you're going to cause more harm than good. In fact, when people eat too much fat and they don't have all these other factors, gut health, liver health, hormone imbalances on, on check, um, that excess dietary fat can be really hard on the liver. Because endotoxin absorption, the first hit, it's called this, I don't want to get too complex here, but this first hit hypothesis, where if we have leaky gut, bacterial particles come in, they hit the liver. Remember, you need a healthy liver to burn fat for fuel. The liver is a key metabolic endocrine organ. It's key for fat burning. And so people with fatty liver, guess what? They don't burn as much fat for fuel. So Angie, I think you're on the right track. Scale back a little bit on the fat, up your exercise, eat more healthy real food and see how that does for you. And then compress your eating window. And, and anyone listening, if you want to learn more about this, the Keto Lean Masterclass, we, we walk you through all this stuff. We have week, weekly webinars. People are really digging the content. Uh, tons of great stories and feedback and, and so forth. So uh, Becca says, Angie, I feel great after, etc." fat adapted. And, and I'll just add, you know, Becca, to, to second on to your point, um, this quote unquote fat adaptation process can take months, right? So uh, it, it's one thing to go on a low carb diet, but then it's another thing to go full keto. And that, that takes a lot of commitment. Uh, social commitments can be altered, right? Because you're going out to eat with friends, family, coworkers, business partners, uh, you know, going on dates, whatever it is. And, you know, some, sometimes you got to be a little bit more picky about the foods that you eat. So there's a boat coming by. Can you guys see it? This view is amazing. We're going to go paddleboarding in a little bit here. Um, <laughs> okay, so Bambaloo says, uh, what's your most funny keto breath moment? You know, this was back in 2002 uh, when I first was exposed to this diet by a friend of mine, Greg. And I remember a lot of the people that were doing keto back then, and I didn't know anything about the science then. And I didn't know that I was going on a ketogenic diet. I just, you know, these bodybuilding friends that I, uh, that I was living with in San Francisco Bay Area, um, you know, their, it just, their breath stunk and it really turned me off from the ketogenic diet because I was like, you know what, back then, you know, I was like 19 into dating and you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I, I just didn't want to have that, that type of breath. Lo and behold, you know, I uh, didn't know at the time, but I started a ketogenic style diet by cutting out my carbohydrates, upping my fat, keeping my protein the same. And that's how I got into this. And it really, it changed my brain. It changed my ability to focus in college, my confidence, my ability to burn fat. I, for years, struggled just maintaining like lean abs and just that dietary change forever. So I've used that as a tool since 2002. But I personally haven't had anyone say to me, like, my breath stinks, you know. So I think that, you know, the acetone coming out of the breath, uh, I think, you know, uh, Bamboo, this is a great segue into another point that I wanted to talk about, actually. And this idea that ketones, or sorry, that, that car, um, calories don't matter as much on a ketogenic style diet. Why? Because as long as your insulin is low, right, the fats that you're burning from your, from your fat tissue, the adipose tissue, or from your diet, are building up this so-called acetyl-CoA pool. Now, as long as insulin is low, that acetyl-CoA can then go on and, and uh, you know, the liver can package that uh, into acetoacetate, into beta-hydroxybutyrate, which can circle around the body, cross the blood-brain barrier, fuel your brain, uh, and then also acetone, as you just mentioned, like your breath, well, if it stinks because you're releasing a lot of acetone. So it's kind of funny that the calories that you're burning uh, you know, as long as you're eating, you know, higher, moderate to high fats, low carbs, uh, and if you're eating excessive calories, for example, more than you're burning, uh, they can just be released in your urine as acetone or in your breath as acetone. So it's not to say that that everyone can eat a 5,000 calorie diet on a keto diet uh, per day uh, and lose a lot of weight and, you know, uh, and just excrete all that energy as acetone. But it, it provides, and Dr. Ben Bickman talks about this, as this metabolic advantage. This idea that you don't really need to track your macros because if you're a little bit under or a little bit over, you know, it will kind of even out over time as long as you're exercising and as long as you're keeping insulin low. So that's what, come, what it comes down to in this, you know, this calorie model. And that's why it puts the calorie model, um, you know, kind of 
I don't want to say debunks it, but gives it a little bit of not so much credence and credibility because if we think about the physiology, as long as our hormones are intact, you know, it, it, the, our body can metabolically, um, you know, flux such that we're not really storing weight. What we're doing is we can excrete that excess of energy as acetone. And again, I got the interview with Dr. Ben Bickman coming to talk all about this. And to summarize, that's called the metabolic advantage. And that's the whole reason why a lot of people do really well on a ketogenic style diet. Okay, um, Deb says keto often compromises the microbiome. Well, it you know, saying that there's one keto diet is like saying um, all carbohydrates are the same. Like right? Twinkies contain carbohydrates, and so broccoli contains carbohydrates. There's a wide range, and so one of the things that I've been you know teaching a lot of you guys on this channel for the past three years is like a microbiome friendly ketogenic diet. And so what that means is high phytonutrients, high fiber, high color, low endotoxin meats, low endotoxin fats. And um, that's pretty much it. And high, high good fats, but that are low in endotoxin. So a lot of the, I love eating grass-fed beef as much as anyone. I love bacon, right, uh, as well. Who doesn't, right? However, um, when you eat these animal fats, uh, animal proteins containing these, these high fats, um, you absorb endotoxin. That's just how it, how it works. I have many other videos that talk about this, and actually the recent interview I posted two days ago with Tommy Wood, we talk all about endotoxin, endotoxemia. So if you're watching the replay, I'll post that in the description, or you just go back to the channels and the videos, you'll see that. Um, you know, so that's what we wanna focus on, is a low endotoxin ketogenic style diet that's friendly for the microbiome. It's a big tongue twister, but I, I think that's where we need to go because a lot of people are eating Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, Diet Mountain Dew, a lot of bacon, <laughs> a lot of ketogenic junk food. And then they might lose weight for a little while, uh, but they, they don't like lean. You know, their face is puffy and red. They're retaining a lot of water. Uh, they might be having high levels of ketones, but th that doesn't really, uh, that's, that's a proxy for health, but not the only proxy for health. Um, so XG4MX says Whole Foods is pretty conscious about um, yeah, I think Whole Foods is getting more conscious, but they do use a lot of uh, safflower and canola oil. Um, not a huge fan of that. Uh, keto shopping, buy a lot of vegetables, find a butcher, find a fishman. Uh, hard to argue with that. Uh, Mike is still option to pay one-time fee for membership. Uh, yes, John C. So uh, that's a great question. And uh, I really support all you guys, you know, tuning into these videos, giving it a thumbs up, subscribing and all that. Uh, but I want to make even more content and I've been providing more content for our members. And so this is hands-on webinars. This is behind the scenes interviews. This is rough cuts of interviews. We've been filming like for this documentary uh, for the past year and a half. So we have so much content in our membership area and I just can't put it out every single day for free on YouTube, right? It, it costs money to buy cameras that you're watching uh, this video through and, and all that sort of stuff. So, so there's a small fee for $4.95 a month, you get the rough cuts, you get the early access to the transcripts. And then for $24.95 a month, you get all the behind the scenes stuff, all of the videos that we've done in our Keto Lean Masterclass area, private Facebook group, recipes, I mean, all the hands-on stuff. So it's, it's about 80 cents a day. So if you can afford 80 cents a day to transform the health of your microbiome, to burn f more fat for fuel, and to get different exercise tips and routines and strategies and other lifestyle and behind the scenes cuts with interviews and you know researchers that I talk with. A little thing, a little side note on that. Oftentimes when I do these interviews with people, I've done now close to over 200, posted 198 on this channel. Uh, some of the best stuff that people say is off camera. And so I've been like, now that I know that, I keep the camera rolling and say, okay, we're done, thanks for the interview, this was awesome, and we start talking, and people just let loose and start sharing this information that they're kind of holding back. So I've been recording this stuff, and I haven't posted it on the channel, but I posted it in our members area to give you guys more behind the scenes, because I, I feel like when people know the camera's on, they're a little <clears throat> stiff and have their, their best behavior and stuff like that. And then once once they know it's off and we're sitting there talking, undoing the microphone, shaking hands and packing stuff up, they release some really juicy content. And so after I've learned this, after I made the mistake of not recording like the first 20, uh, the interviews, like keeping the camera rolling. But now I, I just keep it rolling, keep the audio going. And that's what I'm going to share with you guys is some of the behind the scenes, some of the rough cuts. And that's where most of my learning, to be honest, I mean, obviously I read a lot and all that. A lot of learning comes from those conversations and I wanna share that with you. So for 80 cents a day, you can get that content too. Uh, so let me just go into this. What are your thoughts on carving up for women every five to seven days? Yeah, so Angie, the great question. You know, so when it comes to carving up, I think it's 
essential um, for a myriad of different reasons. You know, just having a day where you're having way more calories than you're burning actually increases your resting metabolic rate. This whole thing called the thermic the thermic effect of food. So this is why bodybuilders and stuff like that can have a cheat day. I've been having, recommending cheat days since 2001. I've really had a lot of benefits from that. It doesn't mean go have McDonald's, but it can be like coconut waffles or you know, just, you know, maybe having sweet potatoes, whatever it is. So, so I think for women, particularly around that luteal phase, you know, when you're menstruating, that's, I hear this from so many of my clients and people that I've interviewed, that's a time when just let loose a little bit. You know, don't be so strict. You're actually gonna be a little bit more insulin resistant those days. So it's gonna be hard to be full keto during your menses anyway. So, yeah, because if your insulin is high and you're insulin resistant, remember your liver can't make the ketones. So that's the thing about having, again, this undulating approach. And Angie, or anyone listening, um, just because one guru does one thing, right, where they say, okay, every on day five, I carb up, or every third day I carb up, or every three weeks I do four days of, you know, there's a million things. What we need to trust, it's just like with, you know, Angie, I know you do a lot with business coaching and mindset. Everyone has different businesses. Everyone has different productive periods in their day. Some people love to just crank out content in the morning. Other people like to do it at night, you know? So that's the thing when it comes to carving up, you need to figure out, okay, where is your body now? How long have you been overweight or insulin resistant or whatever, uh, or unhealthy? Because that time factor gauges how insulin resistant you will be and how active are you, okay? And once you kind of factor in all these things, don't focus on the scale, focus on how your pants feel. Take a pair of pants that are a little tight, though that's gonna be your scale. Forget the scale for now. Because once your pants start to feel looser, you know, because we gain, as men, women, whatever, we gain weight around uh, around the butt, around, you know, the deep visceral abdomen, hamstrings, we gain a lot of water and fat there. So once we start becoming more fat adapted, our, our clothes are gonna be, feel looser. One kind of, when you go keto, it can be kind of expensive because you have to get new clothes, which can kind of suck, right? If you have a lot of business clothes and nice jeans and they don't fit anymore, you have to get them tailored. But what's interesting is, is uh, my body weight has stayed pretty much the same, although I've repartitioned because when you're when you're keto, as you guys know, your ability to to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and retain uh, muscle mass and you become more anabolic, which is key. So so Angie, hope that helps you. So try it out. Um, you know, I don't recommend, I recommend a journal, not necessarily calculating your macros, but take a composition notebook, write down the foods you're eating, what time of the day that you eat them, um, how you feel after. So you get a, a baseline of kind of where things are at, you know, kind of like in your business, you know, what are you, you know, what are some productive, some productive things that you're doing during the day? And, and then maybe write down, oh man, I, I got distracted by Instagram for an hour. I got to work on that, you know? So just being cognizant of the food that you're eating when you're eating them and how you feel after is great. And then you can kind of tweak things. I notice the sun's coming in. If it gets a little bit too much glare, I'll move the camera, guys. Um, and then on a day where you're really active, like you're doing squats or deadlifts or you're running around a lot doing hiking, try carving up on that day. See how you feel. See how the pants feel. See how your cravings are. As my friend Jay Tita talks all about is your heck in check, your hunger, your energy, and your cravings. So that's what we want to want to kind of think about. Is the light getting weird, guys? Let me know on that. Um, a lot of good comments going on here. Processed meats, yeah, processed meats, probably no no good here. Let me move, move this just slightly. Um, so, let's see here, tons of questions, guys. Mike, uh, Henry says, Mike, do you believe in periodically refeeds? Yeah, I think carb refeeds are great. I think periodically undulating, meaning causing uh, some imbalances in your exercise and your feeding schedules are great and your, the number of calories you, you eat. So some days maybe you under eat, you know, cause you're not very active, you don't feel like it, you trust your intuition. Other days you, you can overeat when you're really hungry and, and training a lot. Uh, this approach is wonderful. Um, yeah, so Deb says, catch those farm, farm uh, salmon that got into the, P the Puget Sound. So if you guys didn't know or hear about this, there's a lot of Atlantic farm salmon in these nets in the Puget Sound area, kind of by Anacortes for those of you all that live in the area. And I guess the net broke with the lunar, the solar eclipse and, and whatnot. And so there's, I shouldn't laugh, it's devastating. There's a bunch of genetically modified altered fish floating around and mingling in the Puget Sound with our wild caught you know, Pacific salmon scary stuff here. I mean, this is why this whole, you know, GMO and, and factory farming and all this is, it's really an environmental, uh, it's catastrophe is what it is. And I don't know that there's any turning around. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, if these GMO fish are eating 
the PCBs and other yucky stuff, I have a story on that in a minute, are, are procreating with, with uh, I mean, it's gonna be hard to, how can we trust the fish that we're eating now? Because um, the food that they feed these farm-raised fish is really high in PCBs. PCBs, as you know, is uh, you know an endocrine disrupting chemicals that, that alters hormones, uh, it alters your ability to be insulin sensitive. It, it does some really, really nasty stuff. I have a great podcast with Lynn Patrick coming up all about this. She's an environmental medicine expert. So we talk about how endocrine disrupting chemicals can prevent us from burning fat for fuel, uh, even if we're eating quote unquote optimal macros. So this is gonna be an awesome podcast. If you become a member, you can get early access to that. Um, so I do, I do raw until dinner. That's cool. I love that, Sarah. Uh, and I know my gut bacteria plays a huge role in my weight. I'd like to know what I can do to enhance my gut bacteria. Do I drink? Uh, yeah, so great thing. You know, the, a, a very simple tool here is focus on a lot of color. So we hear about antioxidants. You know, curcumin, resveratrol, sulforaphane, green tea. You know, the, these, these are quote unquote antioxidants. But they're also known as polyphenols. They're, they're very complex in their molecular structure. That complexity is actually a really good growth factor. Certain bacteria love to thrive. They have the enzymatic capacity to thrive and digest these polyphenolic compounds. And that's one way to increase bacterial diversity. To increase, and go back to the interview I just did, Sarah, with Tommy Wood, uh, posted it Thursday of this week. Uh, click the link below this video. I'll post it uh, if you guys are watching the replay. Uh, we talk all about bacterial diversity and ways to increase bacterial diversity. And towards like minute five into that interview, he, sh he lays it all out. So I'll just, you know, summarize that w with that. But you want to focus on color, focus on fiber, and chewing your food. You know, so part of having healthy uh, microbiome is a healthy intestinal milieu, meaning, you know, uh, hydrochloric acid and bile, good motility, you know, digestion is going from north to south, all that good stuff. So I think that interview will help to summarize and... Uh, Again, not to keep hammering in this, this point, but in our Keto Lean Masterclass, we have tons, tons, I think over 14 videos that focus on the microbiome. Recipes, nuances, caveats, fermented foods, uh, meal timing, some of the research, uh, bacterial transplantation, all that is totally covered because that's a word, I wrote a book on this very topic before I even got into to keto hardcore on this channel. So I'll leave it with that. Gosh, I have so many, guys, you have so many questions. Hello from Greece, hello from Macedonia. This is amazing. Uh, a bit late, but anyway, very interesting. Hello from France. Uh, okay, so so Mr. Adam Killer says, I'm eating three meals a day. They are the same. Can I see a picture and tell me uh, if I'll be on keto? Uh, where can you send a picture? So Mr. Adam, you gotta join our private Facebook group. Click the link below this to become a member, 2495. You can get access to that. And then we, this is where you get more one-on-one -on -one stuff. I would love to just spend all day talking with you guys for free. But yeah, I have a family to feed as well, right? Just like you do too. So I mean, if you want that kind of feedback, you gotta become a member. And we're, we're super engaged in there, in that group. And that's where we can get a little bit more feedback. So for 80 cents a day, if you wanna get that engagement, please do so, click the link below, or there's a little button right here, I think as well. Okay, uh, hello from San Diego. I love San Diego. I got a bee bugging me here. Um, okay, uh, let's see, so, so Darsing Wise says, hey Mike, I've been on keto for two months, lost 30 pounds, so awesome. Uh, but my appetite is very low normal. I eat like 1800 calories per day, uh, you're 215. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the hard part about when you first transition on anything is your resting metabolic rate goes down and so hunger can go down. So what I would say to you, Darsing Y, I think is Dar Darsing uh, NY, Darcy NY, um, is you gotta exercise. One way to increase your appetite so that you're actually craving foods is to is get out and exercise. And if you don't have the energy to get out and exercise, it's probably that you've you've suppressed or you've, you've crammed your calories and the amount of foods that you're eating down too low. And so that's what I would suggest. So maybe scale things back. Are you throwing in a cheat day or a high carb day or a carb refeed into that schedule? What type of exercises are you doing? And how about your, your just your daily movement? Do you have a Fitbit? Or an aura ring? Are you tracking your movement? Are you getting out and getting active? Because uh, you know some people, you know, take the subway, they walk a few stairs into work, they're sedentary all day, and then they go home, they eat, and then they repeat, right? So they maybe get 3,000 steps a day. To get really to kickstart fat loss, friends, and to uh, increase your resting metabolic rate and burn more fat for fuel and all that good stuff, you need to be getting at 15, 20,000 steps a day. Now, that might be something you work up to over time, but that's what I found for my clients. I mean, some of the people that, that can't lose weight were like, jack your steps up. If you're only getting 6,000 steps a day, 
<laughs> that's like a sedentary day. You're pretty much sedentary. So you got to crank that up and that will help with your appetite too. Um, okay. So J yeah. So, uh, Angie says, I love Jade. Jade's awesome. He's such a cool dude. Um, so, so many great questions guys. So let's see here. Um, let's see. Um, what time are we at? It's about nine Oh five. So, so, uh, guys, I think we're going to, Oh, 62 thumbs up. Thanks for that. I'm so grateful. That means a lot to me guys. I, you know, that, First of all, that you're tuning in on a Saturday morning when you can be doing a million other things. There's a million YouTube channels and podcasts. I just want to say I'm so grateful for all of you. Uh, you know, this engagement, your thumbs up, your subscribes are why I do this. And you know, I would love to help you even more, obviously, in our members area. But if you can't do it, I totally get it too. All, there's a ton of free stuff that we do, and I'm just super excited. Some I've hired two more videographers to help out with the editing on the back end because we have tons of content that I want to launch for you. And then even more, what what I realize is these interviews that we do with experts are awesome. Some of them can be an hour and a half or you know 70 minutes, whatever. So I'm taking those and and taking out some of the key highlights and putting them in our members area. So for those of you guys that are short on time but you still want the content. I'm just breaking it down, distilling it. So in, within five minutes, you get boom, you get the content, you get the take home points, you get all the transcripts and all that stuff in the Patreon area. So I, I'm just, I'm just want to create more and more content, just tons of content for you to help you better understand how you can implement all these scientific principles into your lifestyle. So you can be, you know, more productive, more energetic, have better blood sugar regulation, you know, Angie, like more, you know, focus in your business, you know, because when we're healthy, there's so many side benefits and we can influence, you know, our communities, our cultures, being unhealthy, having blood sugar irregularities, poor sleep, uh, feeling fat and out of shape, no one thrives in that environment. So I just want to help you, you know, optimize your life um, you know, via through your health, through that conduit of health so that uh, you, you can really be very productive because I've, I've garnered so much benefit from, I mean, I just feel lucky that I landed this job back in 2006 to, to work as a consultant for Nutrition Line and learned all this cool stuff. I want to give it back to you because I realize some, some of you may be an accountant, an engineer, customer service person, work in manufacturing, and, and by virtue of your job, you weren't exposed to these things that, that I just passively, you know, uh, through osmosis was exposed to. So I'm sharing that with you. So super grateful that you're here. I'm going to sign off. Uh, 